organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowa TV, passing the puck to women. This is the first winter for all women's hockey. Student debt? No worries. Some UI medical students are getting their loans paid. And in sports, action and sound from the gridiron, hardwood and mat all on tap. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Good evening, I'm Kelsey Kniff and I'm Rebecca Hager. The University of Iowa is passing the puck to women. This is the first winter for all the UI women's hockey team. Reporter Matt Starnes has the story. It's a relatively new site at Coral Ridge Mall. In past years, female students who wanted to play hockey were stuck with co-ed adult leagues and weekend open play, often with few other women. But this winter, for the first time, the University of Iowa has a women's hockey team, and according to the players, it's a big improvement over previous options. It's more fun because I'm on an actual girls team. Like I, When I played with the guys, I had to change in the, that first aid room right there. So I didn't get like the locker room experience, and now I'm actually making friends and stuff, so that's a lot better. While the University of Iowa men's hockey team was established in 1974, this is the first year that a Hawkeye women's hockey team has competed. UI sophomore Justin Crippolani founded the team with some friends after managing the men's team last year and noting the absence of a competitive option for women. Being that I managed the men's team last year, a lot of the coaches had brought up, you know, it's weird, like, it's just the men's program, and that seems to be all that attracted, and got me thinking, you know, there's usually a women's team, no matter what the sport is, so. The girls are playing exhibition games this season as part of their bid to join the American Collegiate Hockey Association, a goal they hope to achieve in time for next season. In the meantime, Coach Chris Fye is optimistic in the face of the girls' historic first two games, consecutive losses to Iowa State. Score-wise, not what we're looking for, but it's not always about what the score is, especially with the team that we're just putting together. Um, you know, we didn't know how the girls would work in a full game environment. Now I'm standing here in the dark in Coral Ridge Mall because the women's hockey team has the last available ice time slot on Thursdays. They hope to improve their record after a rocky start against Iowa State with two games against Wisconsin November 23rd and 24th. Uh, you know, the girls are working hard. They're really pushing themselves out there. To me, I've done my job in getting us here. I just want to keep things running so that when I finally graduate, it's going to keep going without me. Uh, as long as we keep our heads up, we keep working hard, we're definitely going to have a shot in the coming years. Uh, couldn't be more proud. Matt Starnes, Daily Iowa TV. The Iowa City School District fired a school bus driver accused of using her cell phone while driving. Tabitha Jones was driving students to Iowa City West High School in May. She reportedly got out her phone on Interstate 80 and started texting. According to the Des Moines Register, a student snapped a photo of Jones and sent it in. If you're looking for a good buy while shopping for a college education, the state of Iowa might be the place to look. All three region universities in the state of Iowa were ranked among the top 100 best values by Kiplinger's Personal Finance Magazine. This is the ninth straight year the magazine has included the UI on its list. The magazine bases its rankings on academic quality, financial aid, and graduation rates. The UI recycling team spent fall Saturdays cleaning up after Hawkeye fans. Two months later, the team is champ championing its own victory. Members collected more than 28,000 pounds of recycling and 9,000 pounds of food waste from Kinnick Stadium during home football games. The team is made up of University of Iowa Athletics, Delta Tau Delta Fraternity, UI Facilities Management, and the UI Office of Sustainability. This holiday, don't forget to recycle your Christmas lights. Through January 17th in Iowa City, you can drop off your lights in special collection bins. Those bins are located at City Carton Recycling on Benton Street, Waterfront High V, First Avenue High V, North Dodge Street High V, and the Iowa City Landfill and Recycling Center. The Sci Fi Channel will feature one of Iowa City's local fol folklore, the Black Angel. Haunted Highway will show a segment next week about the Black Angel. The statue is a century-old grave marker in Iowa City's Oakland Cemetery. 
The bronze statue was put up in 1924, but has since turned black. The University of Iowa will be helping with a nationwide stroke study. The study will focus on prevention, treatment, and recovery. 25 stroke centers around the nation, including the UI, will participate. Each center will receive around $200,000 in research costs and $50,000 in training costs. Coming up next, how some medical students are getting their loans paid. And in sports, the latest from another installment of the Cyhawk series on the way. But first, Hannah Thompson has your weather forecast. Hannah? Thanks ladies. Well, it looks like this finals week will be quite warm compared to the temperatures we've been seeing lately. Tomorrow's temperatures will start out with a chilly 12 degrees and partly cloudy skies. Moving into the afternoon, temperatures will rise to 25 with a 30% chance of snow and then fall again to 16 degrees and partly cloudy for the evening. Looking to the rest of your week, expect some warmer temperatures and mostly cloudy skies. Tuesday will be partly cloudy with a high of 32, and by midweek, temps will reach the upper 30s with sunshine on Wednesday and a 40% chance of rain on Thursday. Friday will continue to be cloudy, but temperatures will dip to 22 degrees, and rounding out the end of the semester, Saturday's temperatures will sit at 29, and Sunday will be a high of 26 with partly cloudy skies. Well, that's all the weather I have for you today. Best of luck to everyone with their finals, and back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Hannah. Medical students who are looking to find ways to pay off their student debt can look no further. There is a program to help increase physicians in rural areas, and that program will pay off your student loans. Reporter Lauren Sitzman has more. This has been made possible by the UI Health Alliance's recent donation of $1 million to the Iowa Rural Physician Loan Repayment Program. This program will help pay back student loans in return for their work in rural communities due to the lack of primary care physicians in those areas. Students in the program will receive a loan repayment of up to $50,000 each year and no more than $200,000 over four years. The average debt for medical students, undergrad, and medical school combined is about $161,000. 20 students will be taken into the program, including 10 from the University of Iowa Carver College of Medicine and Des Moines University College. Students who are interested can apply now for the program as well as students who are entering school next year. As of right now, Iowa is providing students with a program similar called the Carver College of Medicine Rural Iowa Scholars Program. The program was to uh, intended to try to get um, our medical students that come from small towns around Iowa come here for medical school, do their residency training um, in Iowa if possible, uh, but uh, and then practice in Iowa, go back to the small towns uh, to provide medical care. The loan repayment has provided an answer to some students' doubts over their participation in the program. The money is a nice bonus. I think I would have liked to have gone to a rural area, but I would have, I may not have gone back depending upon money or if something else had happened, you know, not finding a job or something. So having the money kind of solidifies my decision to go back. Now what's going on beyond Iowa? Nelson Mandela was buried this morning in his home village. The funeral mixed ancient tribal rituals with modern unity between black and white South Africa. Thousands gathered in, white, in a white tent at the Mandela family compound this morning. Mandela spent 27 years as a prisoner and became president of South Africa in 1994. On Friday, Carl Pearson, an 18-year-old from Colorado, entered Arapahoe High School with a shotgun, where he inflicted several casualties before killing himself. Pearson's attack lasted 80 seconds before school security officer closed in on him. Officials believe the gunman's original target was believed to be a librarian who disciplined Pearson in September. Now, a lot going on in sports over the weekend, Kelsey. That's right, Rebecca. So much to get to in the sports studio this evening. So without further ado, let's throw things over to our own Jordan Cabialis, who is standing by and ready to get things started. Jordan? That's right, ladies. Jordan Cabialis flying solo on set and welcoming you back to the Daily Iowan TV sports studio. Plenty to get to on tonight's edition of the program with several members of the Iowa football team made, av made available over the weekend for a final time before the Hawks fly south for the winter and take on LSU in the Outback Bowl on New Year's Day. But we start where we must on the hardwood where Fran McCaffrey's 23rd ranked Hawkeyes lost a heartbreaker on Friday night despite a monster performance from junior Aaron White who pulled down 17 boards to go along with a season high 25 points. The black and gold couldn't hold on to a double-digit first-half lead and allowed the 17th-ranked cy Cyclones to claw back and eventually put the Hawks away after the visitors failed to convert at the charity stripe late in the game. The Cyclones' 85-82 victory 
gives Fred Hoiberg and company three out of the last four wins in the series, something members of the Iowa Hoops team will have to deal with moving forward. Uh, I mean, we got it's a long season. It's only an 11 for 12 game or something like that. You know, we're competitive and want to win, but you can't dwell on, on a loss. Um, it's a hard fought game for both teams, and uh, you got to tip your hat to them. Those are two great basketball teams uh, in, a, in a great environment, um, and they made the plays down the stretch that they needed to, and, and we didn't. Um, but you can't take away from, from the game itself. It was, it was a battle on both sides. Uh, they never went away. We never, never went away. Um, we stuck to what we wanted to do. They probably did what they wanted to do. Um, it's a good, good game. Uh, it's a difficult day. I mean, um, I thought we played a, you know, a very good game, and uh, it's just tough, tough, tough loss. So. Spirits may be down on the hardwood, but the Gridiron Hawks are flying high just a few weeks removed from a convincing Heroes Trophy win over Nebraska and just a few weeks away from a New Year's Day date with the Bayou Tigers from Baton Rouge. For one last time, players were made available to the media before their trip to Tampa, and make no mistake about it, the turn of the calendar year cannot come soon enough for arguably the hottest team in the Big Ten Conference. Yeah, they're a good group, talented. Um, at, uh, overall, they've got great receivers and a great back. Um, I haven't seen much film on the quarterback that's going to start, but uh, he did have a, a game-winning drive. So um, they're, they're good. And, uh, they're great players. They're, you know, just like we play every week, and we're, we're going to have our hands full. We just got to be ready to come and compete. You know, it's, it's very exciting to go out with, with something like that, with an opportunity um, to play an SEC team, uh, which is a good team. And, you know, um, historically, they've been um, a very well team. So um, it's feel good to uh, go out there and play uh, my last college game uh, with, with these guys that um, I came in with, you know. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. Yeah, it's it's gonna be nice, you know, getting down there because you know obviously we weren't down there last year, and you know with that all that hard work pays off going down there. You know, January 1st playing a fantastic opponent in LSU, and you know we couldn't be more excited. LSU will of course be without starting quarterback Zach Mettenberger for this one, leaving the keys to the Tiger offense with freshman Anthony Jennings. And while the matchup may seem favorable to Kirk Ferentz's squad, Iowa linebacker James Morris isn't reading the press clippings. The senior linebacker with some interesting things to say in regard to Les Miles, his new man under center. While we don't have a lot of film on him, we're watching everybody. Um, and coaches are going to do a good job of researching and making sure we get a feel for maybe what this kid's capable of. But it's not really going to matter in the sense that it comes down to what we do and how we play. If he's a fast quarterback, we got to contain him, right? If, he, if he's got an arm, we got to get pressure and we got to make sure that we're sound in the back end, all those things. And those are things that we try to prepare to do every day. You know, regardless of who we're playing. Iowa wrestling also in town over the programming break. Tom Brand's grappler is keen to, putting a, to put a whopping on the buff, bull, Bulls of Buffalo, excuse me, after a minor hiccup in a duel, duel against Edinburgh a week earlier. And that is exactly what went down inside Carver Hawkeye Arena late last week. The black and gold made short work of the visitors in a 46 to nothing route of the visitors with every member of the squad picking up a victory in the shutout, including impressive pins from last year's national champion Derek St. John and teammate Mike Kelly. Full highlights of this one coming up on Monday's program, as well as an extended look at the latest installment of the Cyhawk series on the hardwood and a film room return. But for now, it's back to you guys at the desk right after this. We're bigger, we're deeper. And we're more experienced than we've ever been. But here's White, that's the through. Evans gets the step on the drive, yeah. score it, and a foul. Now he throws it down. Yeah. With the play to Aaron White. Only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek into tomorrow's pages of the Daily Iowan. Check out the plan the College of Pharmacy will put out before state legislature for a new building. Read about what the IMU will do to accommodate students during finals week. That's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time tomorrow or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night.